Hi there, Salim Ismail here. I'm the chief instigator of the Open EXO community, where over 7,000 passionate, driven people are transforming the world for a better future. We want to give you an opportunity to see a bright future, a Star Trek future compared to, say, a Mad Max future that we actually have ahead of ourselves. And to really celebrate that, we want you to take a few hours out of your day and look at the decade ahead with a lens of possibility and purpose and activation. For this reason, we're going to close out 2020 by hosting EXO World, the decade of the EXO, a global online conversation about the future and how we celebrate in a world of abundance. A conversation about how every organization, nonprofit, governmental department in the world can leverage new technologies, new organizational techniques to create the future that we need and we deserve. We want to give you the tools to transform your life, your organization, the institutions, and the world that we live in. We'll see you on the 17th. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Open EXO Live. Uh, great to be here with you today. Today, we have uh, Diana Staffi, who is from Romania. And as you can see on the screen, we have some awesome people uh, coming up uh, all the way into the new year. And so, as usual, at the beginning of the call, we will uh, go over to a few words from our community about. Uh, Diana, and so the first one is from Julia, and she says, Diana is always wonderful to work with. Her positive attitude and creativity accelerates every team, while her strategic thinking and leadership ensures that ensures the right direction. And she is immensely knowledgeable about crazy yet true startups, tech trends, and future scenarios soon becoming reality. Feels like back to the future. Make sure you are in the right zone because she is a lovely person to travel to travel with. Next we have from Suman. He says, uh, Diana happens to be the first person from Romania I have ever interacted with. Her sharp and organized mind impressed me to start with. Next was the number of different things she's involved with. And being a futurist, she brings in significant value in the role of an EXO thinker and disruptor. She has the best combination of wisdom, empathy, and articulation. All the best, Diana. Next from Carmen Lam, she said, uh, Diana is super dynamic. She was an advisor, uh, she did the, an advisor call for my Hong Kong client from Romania. We felt her presence in the room with us. Exponential curves do not inspire people. People inspire people. And Diana was working proof of that. And then lastly, from Yaroslav, uh, Diana impresses instantly with her knowledge, creativity, and expertise in forecasting and staying on top of future trends. She brings a spark and deep insight into every project and acts as a trusted and effective guide for any organization wanting to learn about the future as well as play an active role in shaping it. So these are some of the words from our community. Diana, welcome to Open EXO Live. How are you doing this evening for you? I was more prepared for this, but after hearing all this thought, I was not expecting like some of these people I know, I worked in a project with them, but um, I was not expecting that they have um, such a good impression about myself. So I'm very grateful uh, for that. Again, it's a living proof that uh, the EXO community brings uh, together minds alike. Uh, I am okay in general. Um, it's 8 p.m. here, so it's a bit uh, uh, late in the day. I've been outside playing with snow with my daughter. Uh, and now, um, yeah, she's playing some cards. I'm doing this talk with you, and Perfect. then we'll be ending the day. Perfect. So, so that's pretty much. As we said, Diana, you are based in Romania, but can you can you give those who are watching 
just a little yeah. bit um, uh, of your background, how you how you got into the EXO community and and into what what you're doing. Yeah, so. Um, I am, first of all, a future enthusiast. Um, also, some of the uh, testimonials were mentioning this. Uh, that will be my, my big hat, my big umbrella. Um, under this big umbrella, I have several hats. Um, I am, of course, part of the EXO community, uh, a community of beautiful minds, how I like to call it, uh, from where not only that I learn things, um, but I also meet a lot of people and we join forces in various projects, uh, which gives uh, a lot of energy and uh, purpose to my work. Uh, my other hat is for my main professional activity. I am a foresight strategy consultant. So I run projects with companies focusing on understanding changes, spotting new trends, preparing for the future through scenario planning. Um, and I have an is initiative in this respect, which is called Future Station. Uh, and like uh, Julia was saying, as part of this work, um, I also kind of and then take a lot of uh, research into um, innovations, exponential technologies, like knowing all those crazy startups that she was mentioning, or uh, I don't know, a certain patent or a scientific paper uh, or a gadget or a new product. Um, I also teach foresight. Um, I'm part of the uh, the leadership team of the Singularity University chapter here. Um, I also have a role as a board member for a, a, an IT uh, company in Romania, Connections Consult. Like we are focusing on RPA and a lot of exponential technologies. Um, I do talks with lovely people like you from time to time. Uh, so let's say these are my other uh, small hats. Um, and as a background, I used to work in consultancy in Big Four uh, in Romania, but also as an expat in the Netherlands in a corporate environment. Mm. Now, how did I get to the EXO community? Uh, there is a story related to that. Um, and the story goes as follows. Of course, like any uh, of the members that are here, um, I read Salim's book um, and I was following the Singularity University's activity. And then I happened to meet Lars from our community. Um, just a brief parenthesis, part of my education in foresight was also a program in Sweden that was commissioned by the European Commission. So I was uh, in one of those trips, actually, I had a meeting with Lars on the airport. Um, as a coincidence or not, our next meeting was again on an airport. Um, and Lars was in Romania for the sprint that they had with Bitdefender some years back. Um, Bitdefender being our cybersecurity emblematic company, let's say. Um, and at that time, Lars um, invited me to give a speech in a sprint on education that he was starting, uh, Educate for Life, which is a great endeavor, by the way. Um, and what I remember is that um, in that call, he also invited Jerry Mikulski, which is also part of this community. And I was so impressed by their approach, by the purpose, the way they see things. Um, so remember, this was before the pandemic, right? So they were having this online session for, uh, I think, three, four hours. Um, all ran very smoothly. There were very good discussions. Lars even played parts of the DJ Marshmallow concert that they had in Fortnite. So it was really interesting to be part of this uh, of this group. Uh, and many of the people that were in that sprint, they are also part now of the community. Um, and that all inspired me. Um, uh, they inspired me through their purpose, uh, through the way that they were looking at things. So I wanted to join as well. Um, and I went through all the certifications that uh, we have and that we should uh, be going through, uh, trainer, coaching. I did even a coaching the coach session. Um, and I engage from time to time with the community or with the community members in, in various projects. Uh, now, um, in addition to people, there is also one other very specific thing that attract me to EXO. Um, Again, I do not want to emphasize the fact that uh, everything is pink. Like Salim just said in that video, we are ever uh, over 7,000 people in the community. I do not know all of them, but those that I know and I've been involved with, um, I think they really have the potential to 
um, contribute to change in and whatever domain is that. So um, I was saying, in addition to people, what I enjoy about EXO and more specifically about the method, the model uh, that we work with in the sprint um, is um, its inclusion. So I run this foresight project, correct? I have a framework, I believe in it, uh, I work with it in my projects with my clients. So the idea of having another framework uh, that aspires, let's say, a certain supremacy wouldn't have been necessarily a fit. Uh, and I actually think that this is where the superpower and the strength of the Excel model came in, uh, because um, it allows not only myself, but to everybody to kind of combine um, uh, different elements from different frameworks. Uh, you know, you don't have to go to a client and say, oh, you used to work with Lean? Okay, forget about that. Or... Uh, did you work with design thinking? No, forget about that. The model, the EXO model is made in such a way that you can do the sprint uh, by plugging in the different capabilities that maybe a company has or you have. Um, and that for me, uh, being a metals junkie, let's say, made a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean absolutely. I, I was actually speaking to someone yesterday and we were saying exactly the same thing. He has... On the screen, I just put a, a comment from Sanjay, and that reminds me that uh, I have some questions uh, that I have prepared, uh, and and Diana has 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 also uh, prepared. And but if you are watching this, you can also um, ask questions. So whether you're watching it on LinkedIn or Facebook or on YouTube, you can ask the questions right there. So the first thing I want to really ask you, Diana, is. In terms of um, in terms of the the foresight work and and futures work, can you can you give people a little bit of of of, of understanding what that actually is, how that works? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so foresight is in essence a strategic tool uh, that, uh, with the help of which we manage uncertainty and we explore possible futures uh, in a very systematic way. Um, the aim is to help organizations, but also their teams to be more resilient or better prepared for the future. Mm. Uh, I'm not of the view that this is the only way to do uh, strategy planning. I also don't think that if we do foresight, we eliminate any uncertainty. I just consider that um, it can be uh, used in conjunction maybe with other approaches, uh, but it has very good strengths that the methodology has very good strengths that uh, can be capitalized on. Uh, because the, the work of foresight lives from the premises that the future is not linear, it's not predetermined, and we should not just look at it like an extrapolation of today. You know, we have this tendency of considering the future as a linear development. Uh, you know, based on what we know today, we make this extrapolation, maybe with just some small deviations. And when we do that, we miss um, the exponentiality of changes. So what we do in the future work is that we try to allow uncertainty, to allow trends or unknown uh, signals that are still weak uh, into the planning that uh, we are running and uh, to develop different alternatives and views of the future. Again, I do not believe in predictions. Uh, I think that the prices nowadays go to those that instead, instead prepare. Uh, you probably know the saying, prediction is very difficult, especially about the future. So my work here goes into um, helping organizations rather um, investigate and prepare for the future than just doing predictions. Like, uh, you know, there are all these people that know exactly how the future are going to be like. Um, I rather believe in those that prepare than those that follow uh, this path. Um, it is interesting maybe to mention that the concept itself, it actually emerged from the military planning um, and the scenarios uh, also emerged from there because they were thinking that the enemy can attack from various places in different ways. So they were preparing scenarios. Um, and in late 60s, it was brought to the business world by Shell, the oil and gas company. And they are also a pioneer 
in this work. They make available a lot of the scenarios that they are building and uh, they try to be the thought leader, let's say, in that direction. Um, so if you have ever seen reports, I don't know, such as uh, Future of Work 2025 or Future of any industry you want, uh, or scenarios post-pandemic, let's say, these are usually the type of work that we see coming out of the foresight processes. Um, and in my work, I do uh, go into, on one side, strategic planning, and on the other side, focusing on learning, upskilling, or maybe, I don't know, enhancing future thinking for the teams. So that, that's pretty much the, the type of work. Okay, yeah, so, so, so essentially looking at, at multiple different scenarios, and 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 then having having getting prepared for those for those different scenarios. Yeah. yeah. Correct. And, and and would you say that that this this work as well as work with you know with within exponential is 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 work that is for the the, the for profit domain only or, or or do you see this in in other domains as well? No, definitely not. Uh, so uh, I do majority of my work with for-profit organizations. That's true. But I also work with uh, several clients on the non-profit side. Um, and we look into uh, future of skills uh, in social field or emerging professions for the uh, NGO sector or fun future of uh, fundraising or future of activism. And I really enjoy working with these organizations. Um, although they are not maybe that exposed to all the uh, corporate innovations or the exponentials that you were mentioning, uh, but they have the purpose and the greed. Uh, they are aware that each of us can influence the future with our actions or inactions. Um, and it's a great inspiration uh, for me to be part of such projects. Uh, and. Uh, also, a thing that I'm pr proud of, um, in Romania, it has developed a lot this in terms of social innovation, entrepreneurship. Uh, there are many organization individuals carrying this fight. So I think um, they are good, uh, let's say, looking ahead, the future looks looks bright. Well, that's that's good to hear. I mean, I, I, I know you say you're not a predictor, but, 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 but people like to know um, you know, no predictions. And when it comes to exponential technologies, you know, they're hard to predict, right? You can you can look at at trends and and how something, for example, is is growing um, or, or or improving in, in terms of those technologies. But what do you see as as the role of all these multiple technologies, whether it's a dozen or more, uh, into the future? Yeah. Um, first of all, um, I believe the future will be human. With that being said, um, I am amazed and I get very excited uh, by the pace of innovation in the technology field. Uh, like I said, I follow closely uh, for my own satisfaction, but also like to understand uh, what does technological developments mean for my clients. Um, so we look at AI, of course, it's already, let's say, a bus for a lot of years, but it continues to be one of the technologies that has uh, significant effects on how we live, how we work, uh, how we play, who we are. Um, I look very much into um, RPA, uh, another technology that it's worthwhile watching as a which is a big driver for anything that has to do with job automation, partially or totally. And, um, and for us in Romania, it's an important technology because we have WayPath, which is a company started here with a Romanian um, founder. Uh, it became a unicorn. And again, it's a big deal. Um, I look as well, of course, into uh, Internet of Things. Uh, and I wonder all the time how and when or will all these things around me uh, going to be more interconnected and be able to properly communicate for uh, better safety, efficiency, I don't know, convenience. Um, I also look a lot in cybersecurity. Uh, and it's interesting because um, actually today um, we have a flourishing IT sector in Romania, let's say. Um, and today uh, the European Union has approved that our country can will be the host of the European Union Cybersecurity Center, which is 
uh, which is meant to be like a hub that will distribute the funds for research in this area for the entire block. And that's a, uh, yeah, that's a great achievement and uh, a pillar towards a sustainable development for us. Um, and if I'm allowed to make a joke, um, it's also a very good timing for myself. I started a, a master recently, which is in security and diplomacy. It's a former NATO program. Uh, but having this type of development kind of keeps me motivated to keep learning um, alongside my very, very young colleagues. Wow, that's 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 really interesting. And and Sanjay just 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 put in the comments, uh, you know, that uh, foresight, futures thinking, and the EXO methodology are all complementary yeah. in nature. And 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 ultimately, there is a bit of a convergence yeah. there. Like you said, in the EXO model is quite a meta type yeah. model. It it works with other models. But what would you say, you know, is is that convergence of using yeah. EXO with your futures work? Yeah. Um, so like I said, the EXO model is a very permissive model. I think Yaroslav had the saying in which uh, he was naming the EXO model as um, a one that is not jealous of the other models or something like this. Uh, there are a lot of elements in the various phases of the EXO sprint um, that have, um, uh, that allow uh, part of it to be catalyzed for the foresight work, uh, especially if I think of the extremes, let's say, of a sprint. So, for example, in the first part of the sprint is where we look for the new startups, for the, let's say, new order, for the emerging technologies, yeah. um, which is similar to what we do in horizon scanning as a part of the foresight project. Um, or uh, as well, yeah, I see great, great value in the disruption sessions that we have in the sprint and how we tap into the collective intelligence of the community. Um, and that's also an element that I'm using and to enrich, uh, let's say, my foresight practice because exposing the clients to the entire, um, let's say, global brain that our community has, I think it's very valuable. Yeah, absolutely. And and the thing is, is I mean, ultimately, uh, you know, there's 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 a you know a requirement, I believe, uh, you know, moving into the future, that every organization understands understands exponential, understands the like the future. But it all starts with leadership. So you know, what would you say, you know, to to leaders of of not only for profit organizations, but perhaps you know cities and governments and nonprofits, you know, what would you say to them around the future and considering building an, an EXO? Um, yeah, um, you know, your question made me think um, of something that I read. Um, so it comes from a hockey player. I'm not a hockey expert or something, don't get me wrong. I just uh, remember this, uh, this thing that I read in an article. Um, I was inspired by, uh, what this guy said, uh, I think his name is Gretzi. He's Canadian, if I'm not wrong. Um, Gretzi, and, yeah. Yeah. So he is talking about uh, how to thrive, how to be successful in hockey. Um, and he was explaining that a good hockey player plays where the puck is. A great one plays where the puck will be. So I think... This is, or at least made me think of the similarities of with the business world. You know, not all the players reach the same destination. It's also a matter of where leaders want to play. And I don't say it is easy. No, not at all. Especially in times like this, when all the operational aspects are kicking in, when you have to deal with a crisis and well-being of employees and everything. And But, you know, focusing only on today um, and preparing for tomorrow only with the numbers of the past might just not be enough. Again, especially in a period like this one. Uh, Salim talks a lot about the immune system, how that is so easily activated. And, and you know, in some of the projects, um, before looking into the future, what I do is that we look into the past to understand our behavior, to understand how the leadership, how the organization has uh, behaved in past crises or in front of other past extreme events. And you know, some of them realize that um, 
uh, their behavior in the past um, was dictated by how their immune system kicked in. Uh, so they started to maybe stay in conservation. They decided not to invest, not to innovate. Um, they said, oh, maybe they wait and see what happens. And some of them in hindsight, they realized that they missed some opportunities. Um, and again, I also understand you don't necessarily maybe have to hire consultants or, I don't know, expensive experts if you cannot afford that. But I think it's really important to um, keep an eye on the change, on what happens outside of your organization, outside of your industry. You know, just to make sure that you are not too much focused on this um, and you might be missing the gazelle that is passing by. You know, before before we, we went live, you, you were speaking a little bit about your work, you know, on boards and also looking at, at governance and and how you how you you know speaking about the future and 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 what that looks like with them. Can yeah. you can you share a little bit with with the folks who are watching? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm happy actually that this uh, out of the entire conversation that we had that this was the project that has attracted you because. Um, is one of the recent projects that I'm involved. It is, we have in Romania the first uh, business school, let's say, for board directors, uh, which is a big step again for the future of business. Uh, and they work with uh, a business school, school from UK, the Henley Business School, and also with a lot of board members. Uh, and what we actually aim is to um, explore. Uh, how the future of boards and business governance will going to look like in general. Um, so just imagine yourself, for example, you are in this uh, organization, you are a board member, uh, and then uh, you have a new colleague out of a sudden, and he is an AI. So then one of the things, one of the future hypotheses that we look into is how will this board meeting is going to look like when the exponential technologies are becoming part of it. Uh, and again, this is not that futuristic. Uh, we had already in 2014, I think, um, there was this Japanese venture capital firm that they had as um, they named an AI as part of their board of directors because they thought uh, and they, uh, they were sure that he has and he has the ability to pick up on some of the trends that are not so immediately obvious for the humans. And uh, this helped them to kind of understand which could be the successful investments that the fund wanted to look into. Uh, and then we had, I think, uh, the, uh, Davos, I think two years back, I heard the interview of the CEO of Salesforce. And I was uh, intrigued by the fact that he was explaining that he has this executive meetings with 30, 40 executives, um, and they discuss the decisions, the strategies for the future. Um, and then after all that, he calls in Einstein. And I was like, who is Einstein? And then apparently he has an AI machine that it helps them in to take all the decision. Uh, and, and even Einstein argues with some of his executive. And that was really uh, interesting to, to learn. Um, or because, again, we talk at the uh, EXO a lot about the massive transformative purpose and about purpose in general. Uh, um, there was this movement initiative and that was launched in September this year by Eric Rice, which is the lean startup initiator. Um, he uh, launched on the market an alternative stock exchange, he calls it, uh, which is just imagine a, a New York stock exchange or any other stock exchange that it's actually uh, that values companies based on their long term plans, based on uh, employee well-being, I don't know, based on purpose so on other values than what we are currently see. Um, so we in this project, we started looking at this various signals, uh, let's call it like this. And the idea is to kind of understand uh, if they will become mainstream, how well uh, future of governance going to look like, how my meeting as a board member uh, will go going to look like, what would be my, my role, my value added, how we're going to collaborate uh, with the, say, the AI. Um, and of course, also the aim of the project is actually to kind of understand what the next generation of board members should prepare for. 
Um, it's it's a very interesting project. I'm happy that you mentioned it, um, and I do look forward to see um, the results of that. Yes, you know, so do we, because it's. I mean, it's it, it it is really interesting in a way that how can it benefit the future? How can it make our? How can it make us make better decisions that are that are are, are not only good uh, financially, but are good uh, across a number of an, an, a number of different factors. So, uh, Diana, to to end off, is there anything you'd you'd like to share? I mean, you've you you've been pretty positive. You've you know you you've said that the future is is human. The future is 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 positive. But anything you'd like to end off as as we close out? Um, I think um, I would like first of all to thank you for the invitation and to um, send my gratitude towards you and towards those that are organizing this for the fact that you are valuing the members of the community. Um, I think it's one of the, let's say, the strengths um, of the EXO community. And um, that's, uh, yeah, makes me um, feel uh, that we are appreciated and that we, uh, our work or our views are very much taken into account. So thank you again for the invitation. Um, and uh, let's keep up, uh, let's say, the good work that has been done so far. Awesome. Uh, Diana, really great to chat to you again. Uh, you have a fantastic night there. Um, and, uh, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much, Kevin. And enjoy um, the rest of the year and holidays as pandemic as they are. Um, yes. And looking forward to seeing you in person soon. Perfect. Thanks, Diana. Thank you. So that was Diana Stuffy from Romania, uh, giving us a, a, a bit of an understanding about the future, what it holds, uh, what the scenarios are that she can't predict the future, but it's important to be ready for different scenarios, to be prepared. And so thanks to everybody who's been watching, to the comments that have come through. Uh, really great to see those. On the 17th of December, we are running a global event, which is called the Decade of the EXO. We truly believe that this decade ahead is going to be unlike any decade we have seen before. And so we invite you to come and join us. We have sessions that are taking place in a number of countries around the world. So I'm gonna end off just with a video from Salim giving a bit more information. Thank you everybody, and we'll see you again next week. Hi there, Salim Ismail here. I'm the chief instigator of the Open EXO community where over 7,000 passionate driven people are transforming the world for a better future. This is obviously a very difficult time for the world where institutions are failing, uh, democracy is threatened, climate change is looming, and the coronavirus pandemic rages on. Millions of people are stuck at home, not traveling, huddled in fear in their local communities. We want to give you an opportunity to see a bright future, a Star Trek future compared to, say, a Mad Max future that we actually have ahead of ourselves. And to really celebrate that, we want you to take a few hours out of your day and look at the decade ahead with a lens of possibility and purpose and activation. For this reason, we're going to close out 2020 by hosting EXO World, the decade of the EXO, a global online conversation about the future and how we celebrate in a world of abundance. A conversation about how every organization, nonprofit, governmental department in the world can leverage new technologies, new organizational techniques to create the future that we need and we deserve. An event where you can discover and refine your purpose and link up with people across the globe to reach your goals and to activate with them. So we want to invite you to this event. It goes past presentations and discussions and brainstorming to a conversation and activation on how we transform the world where you're empowered to do it. We want to give you the tools to transform your life, your organization, the institutions and the world that we live in. And we're going to announce a very special structure and process at which anybody can take an idea and activate it and get going very, very quickly. We'll see you on the 17th. 